Hello and welcome to another Action Figure Adventures review. Today we're taking a look at the new Masters of the Universe Classics Castle Grayskull playset. This thing is massive. Here we are taking a look at the front of Castle Grayskull. It's so big, I can't even put it on a table with my usual backdrop. So I've got it just sort of on the floor in my living room right now, so I apologize for all the stuff sitting around. You know, the castle here is a combination of the original toy as well as the prototype for that original toy. You know, the front of the castle here has the skull face and the drawbridge here. It's got the two main towers, and then the other side has uh, the other detail, the main feature here on the front is that He-Man sword can be inserted into a rock to open the drawbridge. This was a concept developed for some of the early promotional stuff, like the Golden Books, and uh, you know, the original toy He-Man could put his sword into the drawbridge here to unlock it. This more like those Golden Books, it's uh, a hole in the wall. Here we are taking a look at the other outer facade. Uh, it's pretty detailed, pretty much like the vintage castle, although it has some paint apps going on. The handle at the top here is actually a separate piece, and you get to decide whether you want to attach it or not. It is non-removable once you attach it. There are some people online that figured out um, how to simply unscrew a few little knobs that then make the handle removable. Um, and there are some screws on the handle itself, which I think you could open the handle up and remove those knobs later, even if you did permanently attach it. The other big feature on this second facade is the secret door on the back of Grey Skull here. This was a sculpted in detail on the original castle that didn't do anything. Uh, and now they've put a little keyhole here that Scareglow's key can fit in. If you stick Scareglow's key in there, you can use it to kind of pull the door open. Otherwise, you have to push it open from the inside. Here we are taking a look at the inside of Castle Grayskull. You can see it's got a lot of uh, space in there, a lot of different play areas, and we're gonna check those out a little bit more closely. So on the ground floor we have the elevator. Uh, there's the weapon storage place. We have the training uh, weapon thing. There's the back of the Scareglow door. There is a prison cell here. And some real chains. There's a port on the floor here where you can attach your Wind Raider flying stand to make the Wind Raider or Sky Sled fly inside. We have the back of the drawbridge. You have the ladder that can be moved anywhere. And there are some more clips for displaying weapons. This is one of the weapons that the castle comes with. Plain He-Man shield. Here we are on the second floor. The elevator can stop here. Here's the jetpack. This was an accessory to the castle that was dropped from the original prototype and has been included with this new castle. We have some computer screens here that were originally cardboard cutouts. Now they're sculpted and painted. Here we have the main throne room. The cardboard cutout suit of armor and computer terminals are now sculpted details. You can see he's just a hollowed out guy. I'm still kind of hoping that we get a classics figure of him someday. And I actually have him holding two of the blaster weapons that came with the castle. He's got pegs to stand on, but it's hard to get them on him. So there's a special sword rack here that can hold the power sword and sword of protection. Um, the castle came with a undecoed silver power sword but no sort of protection which I think is kind of a shame all right we have the throne which is based on the prototype and it still activates the trap door all right the trap door has been sort of modified it's now a square has the same eyeball pattern and then of course there's also the banners this time around the castle has a third floor right here which the elevator can reach Right, a couple little steps, third floor. Uh, it has a traditional like block castle top here or the handle that can snap in. All right, The 
little buttons behind the handle that were there, visible before the handle was put in. Uh, if they're unscrewed, then the handle could come back off. I do think that if I took these screws out, I could probably get access to those and uh, remove the handle again. But because the handle was sculpted into the original, I'm fine with it being permanently attached to mine. Here's the third floor from the other side. On the vintage castle, it existed of just platforms at each one of the towers. Now we have a whole floor. Comes with the flag that can be flipped to the good or dark side. And can go actually go anywhere, but it originally hooked on the platform, so I think that's where most people are keeping it. We have the laser cannon again. It doesn't really pivot um, down at the base, but it can tilt up and down at the top here. And the handles are spread out so the character can actually hold on. It's got a little pin there and a hole for it to attach. Uh, the pawn here, which was in the original prototype and on some of the artwork, what was dropped from the other castle, is removable. It's tight. It takes a little bit of force. You can see it's got this little thing and a little pivot here. The, uh, the top of this castle is not as flat as the vintage one. And then, of course, a new feature that we have in this version is a little door here for the orb room. And there's a little orb stand that you can put the orb that came with King Grayskull on. When we're talking about the second floor, there's also a little secret door here that comes out from right behind the throne and allows characters access to this ledge. So what do I like about Castle Grayskull? The size. This thing is huge. The detail. Look at the door. Look at that detailing, the way it's painted to look like wood with the rusty metal shield on it. All those little tiny stones are sculpted in there. The detail is amazing. The elevator is way better than it was on the vintage toy. Even though the inside is the reverse of the outside like the vintage toy, there are a few little sculpted details like this gargoyle here and then the add-on pieces instead of the cardboard cutouts that really make it feel finished on the inside. The amount of detail they put in this thing, the playability of it, I mean, it's it's really, really nicely done. I do have a few complaints, but it doesn't take away from how awesome the castle is. It, it doesn't make me wish I didn't have it. They're basically things I would have done differently if I was on the design team. Now, if I was designing this toy, I would make this door hinge the other way, because when the character comes out, they have nowhere to go. I have to carefully shut the door while standing on this little piece of the ledge and then sneak away. All right? If they come up this way and someone opens the door, whoa! There's a giant hole in the floor. If I was going to build a socket like this into the castle to park the Wind Raider in, I'd have put it right here. That way your Wind Raider is outside of the castle and it would have looked pretty awesome until we get Point Dread. The prison cell, while the real chains are pretty cool that it comes with, it's the wrong size. Here's Skeletor all bent over on his knees so he can fit in here and then greet people as they come to the door. Oh, hello, He-Man. How is your day at work? The fact that the trap door hits the prison outside and can't swing open all the way, just get rid of the prison. I already bought an orb holder. In fact, I bought the second sorceress variant just to get this thing to hold my orb. And now you're giving me one that's ridiculously short and squat? I don't know. Just seems cheesy and half-assed. If I was on the design team, the last change I would have made is I would have made it so the castle could unfold completely. Right now, it locks into a corner. If it could fold out straight, you could display it on a shelf easily. Here's my Castle Grayskull all decked out with various figures and accessories. There's the weapon rack, which was a separate accessory. Here we have Sky High taking up all the prime parking. Shira and the Sorceress are up top. The sorceress is trying to use the orb to wake up Castle Grayskull Man. And Shira is getting ready to jump in here and save her brother. And all of the flying masters are over here using the elevator and ladder. This castle even works great with your vintage figures. This has been an Action Figure Adventures Not So Animated Review.
since you hung out through the credits, I figured I'd throw you a little bonus. Here's a look at the majority of my Motu Classics collection. And I was originally going to animate for this review, like I do for 99.9% .9 of my reviews. But it's the day before Christmas, and I didn't want to tear apart the whole house when I'm having company tomorrow. But the plan was to have a molar head on some other body and make a joke about him being real Tor, Molar's realtor brother. And he was going to show He-Man and Tila some other uh, places they could live, and He-Man would have a reason why it wasn't good enough until they got to Castle Grayskull.